This video tutorial is part two of how to weave a triangle bag on the triangle loom. And um, I use the Dewberry Ridge uh, triangle loom, so that's, um, that's what I'll be showing in this video. And, oh, I was going to show you what you need, but first of all, I'm going to do my usual little thing about crownfindley.com. That's my website. That's where you go to buy uh, my PDF patterns and ebooks, please. And toddytalkscrafts.com is my blog where I post the support material for these videos. Now, what you need to do, um, uh, I'm going to show you the bag in a minute that you'll be weaving or that I wove and you're welcome to. Um, First of all, I'm going to show you the what do you need and the equipment. Now, for the smaller um, triangle loom bag, I use the um, tri loom from Dewberry Ridge that is 14 inches along the short uh, sides. And um, you also need to have, um, I used weaving sticks to weave the um, handle and sides and base of the bag and they work beautifully and to make the uh, decorative cord I used um, a lucet that my son and I make or else you can use a spool knitter you'll also need a tape measure and scissors and a craft or turning needle and if you can help it it's very nice to have a sweet small dog or larger one who will be nice and quiet hopefully just for a change during this video. That's a very good girl sweetheart. Yes you are my darling. You're being good. And I hear another small door at the stu uh, small dog at the studio door so I'm going to stop and go open the door for another little dog. To this is the latest <laughs> shoulder bag that I've just designed and when I was trying to film it the uh, our other little chihuahua grabbed it and ran away with it it's uh, I wanted to show the whole bag and um, and strap and everything so I laid a shawl on the floor and immediately of course the dogs went well it's gonna be fun anyhow this is as I said, it's the latest shoulder bag that I've designed to be wo woven on the triangle loom. Now, the um, the fronts and backs are woven on the Dewberry Ridge 14-inch loom, triangle loom. The strap, sides, and base are all woven as one piece on the uh, on weaving sticks, six of them. And as well, um, you're going to be making four, can you see the diagonal lines there? Four uh, either spool knitted or lucid uh, woven um, cords. And that will give the finished edge to the hypotenuse of the triangles. So there we have it. The bag actually stayed in place this time. So let's get on to the weaving. I used the 14 inch Dewberry Ridge Triangle Loom to weave four triangles. Now you can see I changed my colors and texture by using different yarns and it makes, it just adds a little zip when you get kind of free for me like that. Now what I've done with three of the four triangles you can see I have sewn a cord along the edge. I made the cord by using um, a lucet and but you could also use a spool knitter and the cord is sewn along the hypotenuse of the triangle. So I'm going to stop the camera and stitch this cord to 
this edge. And I did a video of how to stitch spool knitting to a spool knitted cord to a triangle or any shape that you want. And uh, so you can check that video. If you go to my video channel, you'll be able to find that video for how to sew those together. Okay, I'm going to stop and uh, let the small dog back into the video, uh, into the studio. And I'll be back as soon as I've got this one stitched up. I have uh, all four of the triangles now have a spool knitted or lucid uh, made cord stitched along the hypotenuse. What I'm going to do now is I am going to stitch together, I'm going to lay one triangle over the other with the hypotenuses at the center for the front and I'll do the same thing at the back. And I am going to stitch together the lower edges of the two triangles, just because it's going to make assembly easier for um, when I'm putting the side panels and uh, lower edge in uh, across the bottom. Now, I absolutely love having a pocket in the front and back panels of any bag that I make. And so what I'm going to do, if you don't like pockets, just sew. Uh, right from the dip down to the edge on both the front and the back. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stitch from 2 inches or 5 centimeters down to the um, lower edge both on the front and I'm going to tip it over and uh, do that on the back too. Then I'm going to place these two sticks to show you where I'm going to stitch to make the pocket. I'm going to stitch along where this stick is and where this stick is and that will give me a pocket here for glasses or my cell phone or um, business cards or lip gloss or whatever. If your cell phone uh, is larger then you're going to need to make move your <laughs> vertical lines a little bit out. So measure your cell phone first and um, move your um, lines out accordingly. So if your cell phone is five inches, you're going to need to leave at least three inches uh, at the top. I'm going to get a new cell phone, so I think I'll do that and I'll stitch from three inches down to the corner and on the inside three inches down to the corner and then stitch these two vertical lines to give me my pocket. I'm going to do that on both the front and the back and then I'll come back to you with that done. Oops, and I see I have a dead battery so I'll change batteries. Okay, so now I have uh, the front and the back panels uh, stitched together with the um, uh, the, that line there. <laughs> I, I was thinking there must be a, uh, it's the diagonal, but okay, well, that'll do. All right, so uh, the diagonal line is stitched and the lower edge is stitched. And what I've done is at the corner, there were a whole bunch of loose ends and I just pushed them inside. And when this particular triangle gets sewn shut and this one does, all the ends get tucked inside so you don't have to weave them in. And you can see here I have um, the pocket by sewing my two vertical lines. Now, if I wanted to use this as a small handbag, well, it's not that small, but um, uh, as a handbag or a small project bag, I would just stitch the outside edges together and then cross the uh, and stitch the um, point of the triangle together and then we've got a uh, triangle loop bag. But I want a shoulder bag. So in order to have a shoulder bag I need a handle. And I thought, hmm, why not make the handle part of the sides? and the base. Of course, you've already seen what I did because at, in the introduction you saw how the, the sides uh, become the, ha uh, the handle and the base and they're all, all in one. 
And in order to do that, we have a little bit of math. So I'm going to hopefully bring this up. And I hope that's still in um, focus. To make the handle, sides, and base, uh, we want the finished dimension of the, the handle, side, and base piece to be 78 inches long. You need to have 12 inches, which is 6 and inches at the end of each end of the um, uh, long strip. Those are your tie-in ends. So you add 12 inches to your 78 inches and you end up with 90 inches. Because you're going to take your warp strands through the weaving stick um, and it's going to be doubled, the length, oh, that's my small dog chewing firewood and choking himself, making lovely sounds in the background. Uh, because you're going to double your warp, you have to multiply the 90 inches by 180 inches. So that's how long each set of warp strands is going into your weaving sticks. And, ta-da, here we have the... 78 inches woven with six or so inches at the at one end and I haven't cut the ends off of the weaving sticks yet. I'll show you how we're going to weave in the ends uh, to clean finish the woven strip and we'll do that to, to, to do that process what you need to do is Snip your um, the warp strands right at the right at the weaving stick, and oh, there's a little bit here caught, and you drop those down because you're done with them for now. Okay, and we're going to, oops, I just, I realize I forgot to change the battery. I need to just stop and change the battery and I'll come right back. Okay, I'm back with fresh batteries. Um, I have carefully um, laid out the, the strap so that it is not, it doesn't have a twist anywhere. It does have two folds, so the ends can meet, but you do not want to twist it because you will get a Mobius and you don't want your strap to be a Mobius, that side strip. Now, one of the uh, tools that I find just wonderful that, that Dewberry Ridge folks, uh, Gary and Donna, have come up with, it's this beautifully made uh, latch hook. They actually uh, designed made it for the heart looms that I designed and they make. Just a minute. See if it shows up on there. It's a, it's like a knitting machine latch hook in a really nice oak turned handle. And it's great uh, for pulling the ends inside on um, uh, stick woven pieces. I, I love it for that. Now what you're going to do to uh, join your stick woven pieces together is you're going to bring, fold the ends back and bring the ends together and one at a time you're going to bring the channels. Okay, I'm going to push this down there I think that's uh, easier for you to see now hopefully it is um, so you're going to place the ends right snug up against each other and you're going to take um, the ends from the first channel and tie them in a tight knot, left over right and under, right over left and under. Okay, really, really haul on that to bring those ends together. Now you insert the latch hook into the channel, bring it out, and 
fold the ends over and pinch them into the crook of the hook and pull them up and into the channel and they will vanish. You'll need to uh, reach in again and do that. I like to um, have as much length as possible into the channel. I just think it makes it stronger. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention um, when you were, um, when uh, you are threading your ends into the uh, weaving stick. I used a total of, I used four strands. You can see I used four strands held together because I like to have uh, quite a bulky, um, uh, a bulky set of warp strands inside the channel to really poof out and hold the weft yarns in place better. And so by using four strands held together, I of course folded over it, that gives you eight warp strands uh, moving through each channel. And um, that gives you definitely a nice grippy, bulky um, set of warp strands. Because otherwise, you know, if your warp strands are too thin, you get really sleazy weaving and, you know, sleazy, um, meaning it's thin and slippery and gappy and it kind of, kind of not so wonderful. Okay, I am going to carry on here as if I was in my right mind and keep on with pulling the ends into the weaving. And I'll do that for each of the six um, strands, um, six channels, because I used six, um, I used six uh, weaving sticks, and so I'm going to work my way across, weaving in all my ends. And if I have, you know, if I've pulled them in, you know, for a bunch of inches, and I have a little squiffy bit sticking out, then I would trim that, you know, if it's like a half an inch like that, then I would just trim that half inch and it'll pull up. And, oh, this, uh, these scissors have gotten magnetized and uh, so they, there you go, they pick up needles and pins. Okay, so see, that has disappeared. So I am going to keep on doing that and then I'm going to come back when all six of the uh, the channels from the six weaving sticks have pulled in. I've, I've tied them in the knot and pulled the ends into the weaving. And uh, those knots will just vanish because we'll kind of squitch at them with our fingernails. Okay, I'm going to go and finish off the last five sets of warp strands, and then I'll have one big loop. And then I'll get back to you. So I have tied the warp ends from each of the six weaving sticks together, and then woven the ends back into the channel. And I've got uh, a, some of the weft left over here and I'm going to weave over because there you can see that part of the knots um, are still showing. Usually if you kind of flick at them with a darning needle they will kind of close up over the knot but if they don't you can just use your weft and to there that one's kind of closed over um, to kind of encourage them to just go away just vanish. So I'll do that and take those, just cover those little darlings up. The, um, like I said, the, the knots showing on the inside really doesn't matter because the sun's not going to shine on them. It's just the, the parts where the sun's going to shine and the moon too that you want to be, you know, poific. Okay, that's good. One more stitch. Then what I think I'll do 
is I will lift the camera up. And I hope I don't make it car sick when I do that. I'm going to lift the camera up. There we go. And try and get that level. So what we have now is the loop for the that's going to be for the strap and the sides and the base of the bag. And I'm happy to say that I didn't Mobius it. That's when you go weepy wheely wheely waily. Now we're going to fold the front of the bag in half and I forgot to mention before that having pins is ever so handy. Okay, so we're going to use, going to put the center fold here right at the midline of the, uh, the base and we're going to just push the push pin in and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to push in the push, push pin. Oh, <laughs> I almost did a little fumble of the, the letters here. So push that pin in at the corner. Push another one in at this corner. I'm sitting down again and hopefully what I'm doing is showing up on a camera. I'll just jump up and see. Yeah, it's showing up. Okay, and then fold the base to become the side. Oh, sorry. And take and pin the little darling here. And here, and then, of course, what you're going to do is you're going to stitch one side of the bag together to the base and sides and handle. So I'm just going to finish pushing the pins in and Then I'm going to stitch from one upper corner around to the other one. And I'll be back as soon as I've got that done. And then of course what we'll do is flip it over, pin the other side in. And woohoo! Very close to being done. Okay, so I have one side of the bag sewn to the strap uh, and side base strip and um, I've got yarn ends here from the upper corner and I'll be using the um, the hook to pull those in and any place where I have uh, any thread pops I'll weave those in as well. So I'm going to now flip the bag over and I'll do the same thing I did before. I will fold the bag, the lower edge, in half. And at that center point, right where that line of knots is, although it's pretty invisible, you can feel them, but it's pretty hard to see them now, I will pin that center point to the center knots. Then I'm going to pin the bag in. I want to match up. It's really important to match up exactly your points your, uh, your, at the base, the corner here. So we'll pin those in. And it's really important also to make sure that this upper point Oops, sorry, just bumped the tripod. Oops. Uh, make sure that this upper point is exactly in line with the other side. I have to give this a bit of a pull, but that's okay because the triangle is, is biasy, so it'll it will 
it has give. And there, that looks like I'm pretty well in line. Yep, that looks like I'm in line. And so I'll pin the sides of the bag together. Do the same thing over here, making sure that this upper corner is exactly in line with the other side of the bag. Pin the little darling in. And you will be weaving in those uh, yarn ends. And pin in the lower corner and then the sides. And, of course, the next step is to stitch it together. I do all my stitching by hand because um, the it just the hand stitches blend in so much more nicely than uh, machine stitching does. Um, and also too, I mean this is pretty thick and if the sewing machine would just bite into it and, and you get this line, which could be decorative, that's fine, but I don't like it so I do it all by hand. Um, now you could use, instead of using the uh, stick uh, weaving or weaving it on your peg loom, you could use inkle bands uh, if you prefer, or just narrow um, bands uh, from like a you know a two or a rigid handle or or four floor or um, table loom. But I really love using the the peg loom to do the the. Uh, the sides and base of the bag. It just, it's so sturdy and portable too. Okay, so we're all pinned together here. I'm going to just get this edge stitched together and I'll be right back. And there we have it. The shoulder bag is done. The second seam stitched and the, um, I've woven in the uh, yarn ends at the corners and there we go ready to wear. And the thing is, is that um, these uh, triangle uh, bags are just so comfortable to wear um, crossed over your uh, body and uh, just, mm, they're great. So I hope that you will enjoy weaving and wearing this nifty triangle bag. Happy weaving. Go gently. Be well.